What's up, beautiful people? Tumor Kasi, got all the clouds, got the mountains surrounding the area, got the early morning sun. Today it was far too early when we got up. It was like before 6 a.m. now. That time shouldn't even exist. Anna is rocking the airport chic dress and walking boots combo. Looking good. and seafood. Of course that's what you want just before you get on a flight. So this morning we are back in the airport and today we're heading to Sandakan. But a little bit more on that later about why we're heading there. First I wanted to note just a little interaction that we had this morning. Basically we'd sorted our apartment out and we had some leftover like fruit, some ice lollies, and a few little bits and bobs of food. And obviously we didn't want to throw it away, but we didn't really know what else to do with it. Mum had the idea that because we'd been speaking to some people and I've been trying to find out as much as I can about the water villages of Kos Kinabalu. Uh, and a few of you guys have, have popped up on Instagram and messaged me about them. And we found out the one that we're staying near, people said that people were really poor there and like found it like really tough to live basically. So. Mum had the idea that we could just put it all in the bag and try and just pass it over if anyone wanted it. It definitely was better than wasting it and we didn't want to cause any offence but we thought it would be a nice gesture if we could manage it. Anyway, as we were walking down we'd like ordered a grab and it had arrived so we were kind of rushing. But then this girl just walked past us clearly heading towards the water village. And for those of you who don't know or haven't seen the vlog that I last posted, I spoke a little bit about it at the start there. That's the apartment block that we're staying in. Right next to us. We saw this girl, she was in like really worn clothing, but she, she smiled and she was heading over towards the water village and we ended up just stopping her and I just notioned towards the bag and I basically tried to say like it's food. She didn't really have much English, but I notioned that she could have the bag and her face just lit up and she smiled and managed to say like thank you and she seemed really happy. And obviously we didn't want to do anything that was causing offence but I think it was just a really nice little interaction and such a lovely idea of my mum's. I think the water villages or slums or whatever people want to say, it's really hard to find out information about them and I definitely want to learn more. So if you have any information or want to speak about it, it'd be great to hear your thoughts down below. From what I've seen online, it seems it's almost being tried to be covered up like an aspect of the city or life in the city that isn't talked about very much and I think people they think it's a bad thing but I think that it's an important issue and one that needs to be talked about. We decided that we'd get the flight as well instead of the bus so the flight takes I think 45 minutes or something. Thank you for flying with 
Terima kasih. Bye. Thank you. Well, the half an hour flight was definitely a lot easier than the bus. Yes, definitely want to be going here at some point. Thank you. We can put this one in the back if we need. To Oshana's backpackers. So the reason we're coming to Sandakan, where we've just arrived, is because we're doing a little bit of a tour of the Kinabatangam River. That's the longest river in the state. I think it's like 560 kilometers long. We booked this tour for two nights, three days, sort of going on boat trips, waking up at sunrise. First, we're staying in Sandakan for one night and then to go on that river tour, you kind of, I think you have to travel for another couple of hours. This is our, our room. So we are here. We're gonna try and walk round and then up to the observatory. Pleasure? Yes. Hello everyone! <laughs> so we literally just came up to the observation deck, which it, it doesn't seem like there's a crazy view at. The trees are uh, slightly in the way of the view, but we made a whole host of new friends for a few minutes. <laughs> Bye! See you again! They were nice. How does it feel to be like minor celebrities here? I think it's so sweet when they ask for photos. <laughs> that was really nice. The whole family were here. The dad, the mum, the brother, the sister, <laughs> the children. And they were Cousins. so friendly and asked permission to have their photograph taken with us. The viewpoint is slightly sort of, I thought we'd see over the entire city. Really, we're just looking at a, a bunch of trees and we've got very sweaty coming up here. And we've just walked up a little road just opposite the viewpoint. This is the viewpoint right here. And one of the places that the hostel owner recommended coming to was the Agnes Keith house, which is just up here. Not quite sure what it is, but we're gonna go and have a look to find out. Got our ticket, it was it's like 15 ring at each, but apparently it's the house which an American author, Agnes Newton Keith lived in just before and during World War II, actually. Um, yeah, got no idea what to expect from this, but it was well reviewed on TripAdvisor, so we each paid the 15 ringgit and we're gonna go and check it out.
this is actually really interesting, guys. So, Agnes Newton Keith was married to Henry George Keith, and he was a conservator of the forests of Sulla. But even more interestingly, the Rafflesia flower that I haven't managed to see yet, that was renamed in 1984 to be Rafflesia Keithy in honor of his contribution to the forestry of Saba. Honestly, that was really, really good. I don't think Hannah, am I right in saying, Hannah and I, I don't think we really expected much from it. We almost didn't go in to be fair, but mum really wanted to go in. Yeah, I just love looking at old houses and the history of the people within it and very interesting. And I think we were completely shocked with like how I can't talk with this soaring in the background, give me one minute. I think the highlight of the whole house for me was watching the video at the end which kind of showed us, it was almost like a story of Sandakan and um, we basically learnt and saw from like old photos and old footage what the town was like in 1940 and then how it looked after the Japanese had torched it and the Allies had bombed it in 1946 and it was just super interesting and it, I think it grounded us because I don't think any of us were super enthralled by Sandakan like since arriving and walking around a little bit but then I think understanding how it's been built with no sort of like governmental help or anything like that really really sort of like made us realize how incredible it is that the people just sort of got on with it and rebuilt the, the town. Oh. Can I have a Borneo Rainforest tea as well please? In my chair. Hello. Oh you're the cutest. You are the cutest. And so we've just stopped by at the nearby English tea house which looks amazing and obviously got some tea. How are you doing this? And a scone as well. <laughs> and a cake. Yes. This is our fantastic waiter, Adrian. From if any of you guys are watching from the Philippines, from the Philippines. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat. What's a guy? Does it get any more quintessentially English than this? We got a scone with jam and clotted cream and a tea. Although it is a rainforest tea. Cheerio, guys! Maraming salamat po. Bye. And so we're just down at the waterfront here in Sandakan, and I really really wanted to fly my drone. I feel like I've hardly flown it over the past couple of weeks, but this, that is a huge naval base that we just walked past with lots of people with big guns. And I really don't want my drone shot out of the sky. So I think I'm gonna leave it for today. And that is that. Today has been a bit of a travel day, a bit of an exploration day, but I think it's been really nice here. I think it's actually exceeded our expectations. When we first arrived, we weren't too sure about how we felt about the city, but then after we sort of went up to the Agnes Keith house and then went to the English tea rooms, we'd definitely been converted. And I think there's a, uh, it's been, a, it's been a very good day here. I think there's also been a lot more interest shown in us for being tourists here, especially in Hanna, um, when we were just like walking around the city later this evening and earlier before we went up, uh, more so than we've found in like Kotakina Balu or in Kuching, which is very interesting as well. But uh, this is our only night that we're staying here at the moment. And then I think in a few nights time we'll be back, but until then, we will be going down to the Kinabatangam River and hopefully seeing a load of wildlife, doing some, some walking, doing some little boat trips up the river and things. And it's, it's definitely one of the things we're, we're most excited to, to go out and do, really. It's one of the things that we've been most looking forward to. I think you can see pygmy elephants and if we were able to see those, that would just make life. Anyway, we are gonna get some sleep now. So, thank you so much for watching. Big love. That feels good around here.
Ah! Uh -huh.